here we are. <laughs> hey, it's Romania Black. We are on volume 33 of Ace of the Diamond Act 2, and this feels very monumentous because I have been watching and reading Ace of the Diamond week to week without fail since June of 2021. And it's October of 2022. <laughs> so it's been like 15 months of reading and watching this series week to week without fail, whether it was the anime, whether it was the manga. And I've reached the point where now I'm going to have to wait a month before I can read volume 34. And after that, it's going to be nine weeks per volume. So the good news is Ace of the Diamond is not over. I'm not done with the series. I will be heartbroken when that happens, right? So the good news is I'm not done with Ace of the Diamond. They're eventually, fingers crossed, knock on wood, gonna animate the fourth season that'll cover this game and all of, and Sanko and everything. They'll animate all that and I'll get to fangirl with all of you on that. But for now, after this volume, I'm gonna have to take like a four to five week break. And I don't know how I'm gonna handle the dire withdrawals, to be honest. <laughs> I know I'm gonna be starting a new sports anime, so I guess that'll help fill in the hole that will be in my soul <laughs> until we get new chapters. And of course, you all in the Discord and in the comments will be like, hey, we know what's happening before you do, Romania. And it's like, uh, as soon as volume 34 is over, as soon as chapter 310 gets translated, though, I will be all caught up with y'all for like a week. <laughs> and that'll be a lot of fun, right? That'll be a lot of fun. And then after that, I'll go into hiatus into my cave for another nine weeks. <laughs> so, <laughs> or 10 or 11, depending on if um, Terajima takes breaks. But we are covering chapters 293 to 301. I'm really excited because chapter 300, it's going to be usually, usually the hundred mark chapters are big deals. I don't remember what chapter 200 was. Um, I guess that was around volume 22. I'm trying to remember what happened to volume 22, but that was around that time. And usually the hundred mark chapters are pretty important, but chapter 300 seems like it'd be a big deal, right? In the middle of this game, right? If the game ended on chapter 300, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm almost kind of, I mean, I'm nervous because I kind of want the game to end on this volume because I don't want to have to wait a month to find out. <laughs> but then on the other hand, I know how Terajima is and I'm like, damn it, if he makes me wait another four to five weeks to find out who wins this game. Ah! <laughs> so, Tonight, I'm not only going to be looking at volume 33, but also I have been requested to do a character tier now that I'm officially for now caught up. And I was like, okay, I'll do a character tier. I really didn't want to at first because I was like, well, I don't want to, I don't want to do the character tier until the very end of the series, right? Because we may meet some new characters along the way. But since we don't know how long that will be, at least I can look, do the character tier for now from where I've, from all the 15 months I've done week to week with Ace of the Diamond, who my character tiers are, and then maybe when the series is all over, I can go back and do it and then compare and see how they were similar and different, right? I'll do a screenshot of my character tier now, and then when the series is completely over, I'll see how they compare. That would be kind of fun. So yeah, we're going to do a character tier tonight whenever the volume's over and the discussion is done. We're going to do a character tier, and um, we're going to talk about this volume. So I'm just delaying the inevitable, and you all know it, but I'm really excited for this excited and nervous. When we left off, Shirakawa was up to bat. He tried to bunt, didn't work, fouled it. And then Salmura was like, just did the, the big, the floof. And so we got to see where we're going to from here. But yeah, y'all, I'm, I'm really excited. I went back and read chapter uh, 292 right before starting this video to kind of prep myself, but oh my. <laughs> so you know what? Whatever happens, happens. And I'm just going to savor this volume for all that it is and get chapter 300. And 301, we get the chapter after that. So let's not waste any more time. We're going to start Ace of the Diamond, volume 33. And we are going to do so here in three, two, one. And let's do this. Y'all knew. <laughs> Y'all knew. Y'all knew as I went into this volume, you're like, oh, Romania is going to read to chapter 301 and then she's going to have to wait because right now the only chapter out is 305 and 310 is going to be the one that I have to do to get to the end of volume 34. So I'm going to have to wait another 
another four to five weeks to find out the result of this inning. And oh my God, <laughs> I might go insane. Oh my gosh, why? That's the worst. Y'all were joking in the Discord, not not within the last few weeks, but y'all were joking like way, way back when I first said I was gonna start reading the manga until I caught up. A bunch of you in the Discord were like, it's gonna be really suck, it's gonna suck really bad if you end on a cliffhanger. And I was like, well, hopefully that won't happen. <laughs> Why? Oh my god. I was thinking this that this volume was going by way too fast and then it started to slow down a little bit and then I didn't want it to end because I started to realize once I get to like the chapter 298 I was like we're not ending this game in this volume and of course we're not. <laughs> Man, Terajima was a tour de force. I took like four pages of notes, like four pages of notes I took on this, on this and then we still gotta do the character tier, you know. I go out with a bang before the break, right? <laughs> so yeah, man, chapter 293. Chapter 293 I probably had the least amount of notes on. Like I said, the first couple chapters, I was like, oh, we don't have, we're going pretty quickly through this, through this volume. And then, and then it slowed down quite a bit. Pack of the Strong. Uh, man, Inashiro, their cleanup crew. I do like that cover page of them all standing there like gritty and determined and it's the cleanup crew. I like that a lot. Um, but Miyuki, Miyuki acknowledging how persistent Shirakawa is. And note that Miyuki isn't a bitch and calls and just dogs Shirakawa. Shirakawa's hatred of Miyuki still fascinates me. But it's a battle of wills, right? And Saomura, the thing of it is, I want to make note of this. Saomura, he knows that he has his teammates backing him up, right? And Sato's defense, we'll talk about Sato's defense a few chapters from now. But, but Saomura, he pitches confidently because he knows they've got his back. And he knows that they're going to do the best that they can. May, of all the pictures we've really seen in like the major games, even Amahisa, Amahisa notes his his outfielders too during the match. But May doesn't really acknowledge the outfielders much during Inishiro's game. May's just like, I'll stop it right here, right now. That's kind of his mentality. And Saomura's like, well, if I, if I screw up, the outfielders have got my back. So it is a little bit of a different philosophy. It's interesting May doesn't really recognize uh, his team that much and that's kind of honestly I've noticed there's been more fielding errors maybe with Inishiro than Sato we'll talk about that later on right when it comes to the outfield but Shirakawa being desperate to get on base being desperate to the point where he slid into first even though he barked at the team about how bad that was and what a moron you would be if you slid to first because you could injure yourself even despite that he was so desperate to try and get the team tied that he did that, right? And But Haruichi Dezono, I liked Haruichi's little cute face, like when he got Shirakawa out, he had like a little cute face as he's running back to the dugout. It was really sweet. I liked that. And then it was definitely a blow to Inishiro and Satome. Well, I guess they weren't going to the dugout yet, but Satome was going up to bat. And Satome being a second year that was new on the roster, I really like his backstory. He says he'll hit what he can. And that, that moment that his foot kind of like moves right towards the end of the chapter, and Miyuki and Salamura are like, oh crap, he's going to hit it. And he didn't, right? But it kind of freaked him out a little bit, right? Like how they thought he would have hit his changeup. So that was really interesting. And it ends up being a strike. And his song is Massive Attack. Some of these song choices, we'll get to Harada <laughs> at the end of this. But then chapter 294 is Spirit of Combat, which is tied to Yameoka's song, which is Combat March. All these war anthems that Inishiro is playing, right? But Saltome... I really like him. He's an interesting character for Inishiro. He's a lot different than a lot that he's not a diva like Carlos or Shirakawa or May. He's not like that at all. Instead, he's he's kind of introverted. He talks about doing things on his own, which again, Inishiro is a team of individuals. They're not really, they're a group of individuals. They're not really a team team, not like Sato is. And so it kind of makes sense that like Kunitomo's gathered this elite force of amazing individuals, Satome doesn't really interact with his team much. He kind of does his own thing like everybody on that. Everybody on Inishiro seems to do to an extent. But yeah, he gets injured a lot. They say he's really injury prone. He, his elbow was the problem that he didn't play last year. But I found it really interesting that he decided to stick to the sidelines and learn all that he could about nutrition in his body. And he's kind of a mix. I said Nabe in the reaction, but Nabe is more of the strategy. But it reminds me like if Nabe and Chris got together, that's kind of, that's kind of, Satome a little bit like the, his attitude and then his like precaution and everything but it's interesting it's a very interesting 
opposition to Nori, where you have Nori who is willing to like sacrifice his body and injure himself to play. And Satome literally tells the coach he's not going to play until he's fully healed and has known how to take care of his body. And he willingly sits out his first year, which is pretty big, right? For, for a person to willingly, because like even Chris, you could tell, hated the fact that he couldn't play. But for Satome to naturally choose to do that is really fascinating. I'm like, huh, he actually wanted to do that. That's It makes his character very intriguing. And he wanted to learn about nutrition and how to heal himself. And then his second year, he came back and got on the roster and got in the first string and was able to prove himself. So I kind of like that. I feel like Kunitomo would respect that because that, that dedication and self-discipline, I feel like he'd be all about it. So interesting. But yeah. But yeah, he manages to uh, to get to, he makes it to first base seemingly, and he basically waited for the pitch that he wanted. And notes how Salamura is not as fast as Faria or as scary as May, which is true, but that doesn't make Salamura any less intimidating, I don't think. He's just comparing, he's making himself feel like he can hit the ball. If he compares him, he's like, well, he's not Faria, he's not May, I can hit this. It's just his way of psyching himself up. And then, I'm sorry, but that was wonderful, like him kind of shitting on Shirakawa, where he was like, he's like, look, I did the right thing that you're supposed to do, I didn't slide into first. You did a no-no. Don't do that again. And Shirakawa was like, I just, that was so great. I loved that so much. Like, he's like, you could have injured yourself. It was hilarious. I like Satome. We're going to do the character tier in a minute. He bumped himself up in this volume. I was like, look at you. Look at you, Satome. I like you a lot. But then it goes to Yameoka. Oh my God. Terijima. He just wants to slam it. He is terrifying. And Terijima makes him the scariest. Like, just coming up to the plate and Miyuki looking apprehensive of of Yameoka as he should but T Terajima makes him as like looks as scary as possible and like when he holds the bat in the one shot you can see like the in the bat handle you can see like the rubber where there's like the holes in the grip it almost looks like barbed wire I kept thinking of like Negan from walking um, from the walking dead I was like oh my god like he just seems like he's just gonna slaughter a bunch of zombies at any moment but Sawamura I love that he's not impressed by Satomi trying to steal. He's like, what are you doing? Like, stop it. <laughs> he's just like, no. And and so, now Satome is trying to get him off guard. And we'll talk about that in the next chapter. But yeah, May, like the moment that Yamioka looks absolutely terrifying, May's like, oh, he's in the zone. Cool. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. And Saomura deciding that, yeah, it's going to be a raw battle of souls, but we're going to fight. I'm like, good for you, Saomura. So yeah, uh, Terajima's double spreads, chapter 295, Swing, that was a great chapter. Like that, all the double spreads, like you can feel the ball coming at you in some of those shots. It was so cool. I love the artwork that just showing the ball and the way he, the, the way that he illustrates it. It's wonderful. But yeah, Salamura, he's not afraid. He's not backing down under pressure. I'm like, Terajima is trying to make this as scary and as close as it was last year. And I'm like, if you could just stop so my blood pressure will stay at a reasonable state, that'd be great. <laughs> Cause it wasn't by the end of this. I was like, oh my God, no, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah, the custom cutter, he throws the breaking ball at him. So Tommy, he tries to lure Salamur with the lead off to make him distracted and to weaken his pitches, which is a pretty good strategy, right? But Salamura is not buying it. And just like the fire, like the thick line work that's coming off of Yamaoka, you, it's just palpable. You can feel it, right? But the lead up to Salamura, the lead up to Salamura being like, try me. That was so good. Like just, it was so quiet. It was like silent. Like it was just, except for Yamaoka's slam it. Like that's the only thing you heard. And then Salamura saying, try me. Mwah. That was gorgeous. I loved that so much. So good. But yeah, they he underestimated Salamura. I think in the end, Yameoka underestimated him. And he nicked it. He nicked that pitch and it went to Kanemaru, then to Haruichi. And then I love that Salamura was like, he called, he told Kanemaru, he was like, go to Haruichi first and then throw to Zono to make the double play. That was like Salamura's fielding, as Amahisa will note, is very good. So I like that. And that double play with May up to bat, mm-hmm, that was great. So yeah, those three chapters... I got them all on one page of notes. They they went pretty fast. I was pretty impressed. And then from then on, I have like two chapters per page. Because <laughs> it was like, oh God. Ah. But yeah. So Salamura, his howl of victory at the end of 295. I mean, May, May kind of imitates it later, but it was all Salamura's. I was like, hell yeah. 
so good, right? So then chapter 296 and 297, um, I, I probably have a lot of notes on, but I do on 298 and 299 as well. Um, what makes an ace? I love that chapter so much. Yeah, Salmura, his great pitching, three outs, and now we're down to the ninth inning. Oh my God, we're, we're, we're concluding the match, hopefully, in the next volume. Unless they tie it up, and then we have to go into extra innings. Wouldn't be surprised. Wouldn't be surprised. I don't want that to happen, though. Ah, don't spoil me, but damn it, y'all are going to be snickering for the next month while I stay in a panic state. That's what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the first years, I love the first years. They're like, number nine! Like, I can't do the move that they do, but they do the number nine. It's really cute. Um, Chris and the others are so proud of him. Nori notes the pressure. Nori knows. He knows the pressure that Salamura is facing. And Tetsu notes that Salamura, how he's worked to create that number nine pitch, taking something he was good at and evolving it. And Miyuki genuinely praising him. Nice pitch. And Salamura is like, so pleased as punch. He's like, yes. He's like, all right. It's just, yeah, that moment was so good. And then like tapping the gloves. I'm like, good. Miyuki gives him a genuine amount of praise. Awesome. Yes, that's what we've wanted this entire game, right? And then Inishiro noting how calm that Salamura was, knowing how he could handle everything. Like, Inishiro, they give credit where credit's due. But May, May in this chapter, where it says that what makes an ace. May in this chapter, I love when he thinks back to the comparisons of him and Furuya, and you get that little montage of the past when he first met Furuya. And he says that he thought that he was seeing himself in Furuya, because of all of the high expectations and praise that they got in their first year. He's like, oh, Faria's going to be just like me. But then when Faria lost his ace number and kind of, you know, fell into a slump, May's like, well, that's not like me. You're not like me, right? And then he looks, he notes that he looks at Salmura and that line where he's like, Salmura Ajun. Mm -hmm. He's like, maybe Salmura is more like me than I thought. Which is true. Salmura is very much like May, and there's so many moments in this volume. So yeah, it's like Salmura has so much potential, and May keeps evolving as well. But I think that Salmura is more similar to May than Furuya. I think that May is starting to realize that Salmura is much more similar to him than he originally thought. He's like, ah. And so then of course he notes he's like, well, he's like Kazia, you're one of the lucky ones too, huh? You get to have two pictures that are like me on your team they're kind of like me but they're not a full package like me so it's like oh my gosh but I'm like it just feels like the moment May is like mm, I see why you wanted to stay on Sado Miyuki hmm. it's like ah x vibes for sure but yeah Fukuda Fukuda I love him him just rallying the team to get ready to not give up like a damn cinnamon roll he's precious I love him gets the team rallied up and I like Kunitomo says it was the right choice to make him captain Hell yeah, there is nobody else on Inishiro that I could see being captain. May is too much of a diva. Mm -mm. He would not be able to rally them all together like this. The half the team kind of begrudgingly likes May because he's really good. But if he wasn't a good pitcher, I don't think they'd have anything to do with him. But yeah, Fukuda is definitely the one to bring them all together. So it's definitely the good decision to have made him captain. But yeah, and so then Katioka on the other end, he's like, he's like, May and Armia, we knew he was going to be tough from the start. They're like, it was... He's like, we're not backing down from him. We're going to keep mounting the pressure we have been from the start. It's all we can do, right? That's all we can do. And then Zono goes up to bat, and I had missed his scary face so much. It's been a long time since we've seen a genuine Zono scary face, and I was ready for it. I was like, yes. I was so excited. I was so excited to see that. And then, then we cut to Salomar in the locker room. I, it's like Terajima, look, you, I know... I know you're trying to avoid being like a cliche sports anime, but it's okay. It is okay to give Sal Mura a moment of praise and to let it linger for at least two or three chapters. <laughs> it's like Terashima gives us like an ounce of satisfaction. And then he's like, but also, and I'm like, stop, just let us, let him soak in it. Let him soak in this, damn it. Why won't you do this? But yeah, no, cause we go to the locker room and he's like, he's talking about how much pressure from the last two innings, like he's already soaked through his shirt. So he's changing it. 
And then, and then he's like, if we keep them at bay, we can go to Koshin. But it's like, but Salmer almost like, I'm glad in the next chapter he's, he kind of talked himself out of it because he was getting a little too ahead of the game. And I just had to laugh because as soon as Salmer went down in that locker room, I'm like, Koshu is going to be right there. He's going to be right there, like sticking to him like glue. And he does, damn it. It's, it's the funniest damn thing. He shows up, of course. And then what the hell, Terajima? Why do you have him drop the water bottle? And then you all had to have a break. You all had to have a break after that chapter? I'm like, Terajima, that is heartless, my my sir. Heartless. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? That was heartless, sir. De definitely, indeed. But yeah, what the hell? <laughs> what the hell? So yeah, him rallying the team to not give up. And doing this, Fakuda doing that, and then ending with a break after that. And so chapter 297 is for this day. Zeno's face being super, Zono's face being super scary. Say Zeno. Thinking of the wrong manga. Zono's face being super scary. It's back. He manages to hit the cutter, which is good for May. And May, May does not like Zono at all. I love that May is just like, you're just standing there doing nothing. <laughs> May just doesn't like when, because here's the thing, a lot of other teams that have faced Inoshiro, at some point, at some point, those teams facing Inoshiro probably just thought that they'd get the better of May or they'd be the hero or they'd face them head on. But Sato taking its time and being patient this late in the game is kind of a testament to that, right? Huh. But yeah, so May just gets super frustrated about that. Inoshiro's fielders, they're not as airtight as Sato. I don't feel like they are, because Zono makes that hit, right? He hits the cutter. And it's it's a switch from last year, right? Because last year, Sato was all offense. Like, they were known as their their cleanup, their batters. Their, their offense was great, but their pitching and their defense was where it was a little bit weaker. And this year, it's completely switched, where their offense is good, but their defense and their pitching is, I'd argue, better. So it's such a crazy turnaround, right? And I don't feel like with Inoshiro, I mean, they lost Harada, but I don't remember a lot of Inoshiro's third years from last year other than Harada to know if they lost any outfielders and that's why they're struggling. Or they're not, I mean, they're not struggling. They've done pretty damn well, but we just see them, you know, they're not impenetrable. So that's interesting. But yeah, Zono gets on first. I do love when Ochi and the manager like clasp hands like he did it. <laughs> like, I just, I love that part. That's so cute. And then Sal Murrow, he's keeping up the energy. He's got to do it. He's ace. He's got to do it. And Zono just blubbering. He's in incomprehensible. It was great. But Furia decides to take a bunning stance. And I love Sal Murrow's like, it's in the hips. It's in the hips, Furia. Like that was, that was great. That was great. And Miyuki. Miyuki and Koshu. Two catchers, making sure their their ace is all right. Miyuki's like, do you take those supplements like you should? And Salmer's like, of course I did. He's like, ah, Koshu even was a gentleman and gave me a drink. And Nori's like, the bullpen can drain you. He's like, being in the bullpen can drain you just as much as the dugout. So he's like, you've been at it all day. You know, and then Koshu, we cut back to them and he's like, are you okay? And Salmer is like, I let myself relax. I've got to stay on it. The game's not over. I like the Salmer dialed it back and was like, okay, we can't be counting our chickens before they hatch. We've still got to stay in the game in the moment. I like Salmer did that. That was really, really good. I got to stay pumped. And Koshu notes that Inishiro is putting so much pressure on him in just two innings. Right? And this third inning that he's in, I'm like, <sighs> yep. But Furious slashes and runs, and he manages sadly to get out, but Zono makes it to second, and then Tojo's up to bat. And Faria, I liked it. Yeah, Faria hit so hard that, that Yabe was like shaking. He couldn't quite catch it. That was really cool. And then May. May notes that Zono's getting on his nerves, which is great. And then Yuki. I love that Yuki is so proud. He's so proud that Sato isn't resorting to like bunts. He's like, they're sticking to their guns and they're staying on the attack. Tetsu is like so proud of them. I love that moment. That was really good. And Salmer being like, go, go, Tojo. Um, Mukai! We cut to Mukai, and I forget that Tojo and Mukai, they were like from rival schools, weren't they? They were like middle school rivals, right? And Mukai's like, come on, Tojo, you can do it. Just, wouldn't it be funny if you did it? It's like, Mukai, he's such a brat, and we'll talk about that a little later, but he's such a brat, but he kind of like is secretly cheering Tojo on. It's funny. And then 
Even, even if he hasn't hit yet, Masashi's just in the background. Masashi went foreshadowing. He was swinging away back in the dugout. That should have been foreshadowing. See, I figured at that point he was going to be a pinch hitter, but I thought he was coming in for Salamura, but obviously that didn't end up happening. And then Kanemaru cheering him on. And Zono about to steal. But I like Shirakawa. Shirakawa, that translation, we've joked about the translations being slightly off at times, but Shirakawa being like, dream on, that was... That's so on point. That's such a good statement by him. And then May has lion eyes, just like Salamura. I'm just saying. Just like him. Just saying. But yeah, Tojo's mentality throughout all of this is just to swing sharp and compactly. That's his goal, right? So we go to chapter 298. The moment the chapter was called Wild Card, that should have been a hint that Masashi was coming in, but I was so in the moment worried about Tojo that I wasn't thinking about that. And so Tojo, he's patient. May gets aggravated for it. He tries to like force him to hit. And Amahisa notes how May's pitches have even gotten sharper. And I like Amahisa in, in this volume. He just like, his little, whenever May, like he manages to get Tojo out, but Zono gets on second. Amahisa's little, Tch. he's like, you just keep getting better. Tch. How terrible. Like, I just like Amahisa's kind of jealous. I like it. I like it. But May, in nearly nine innings, has only pitched 105 times. Insanity. Insanity. That's like, you know, barely 10 pitches, a little bit over 10 pitches an inning crazy talk right right and mukai mukai being like well it's not that i expected much from you i'm like you're so full of shit mukai you're such a brat what a snake i it's funny though i liked it and then samura he's hyped furia is indifferent samura is hyped for masashi furia looks indifferent like it cuts from samura to furia and he's just like eh. <laughs> and then masashi comes up to replace kanemaru which is interesting instead of samura but it makes sense they've got two outs kind of sucks for kanemaru because it sounds like Kateo was worried he'd get out, so they were going to risk it. So it kind of sucks for Kanemaru. I'd feel a little insulted, even though it's for the team. But yeah, May is excited. Like his dark eyes, he's so excited for Masashi to finally face Tetsu's brother. That, that's the cool thing. And then you, Tetsu gets serious. Like he'd been kind of like lighthearted, like, good job, Sato. And then when his brother comes up in bed, he's like, all right, you do this. <laughs> That's right. And it's just like, everybody's like, you got the Yuki jeans in ya. Which that he does. They're all, When they're on the same page together, which I know we got it like way back when act two was starting. We saw Masashi and Tetsu on the same page. But now seeing them side by side in a panel, it's like, yeah, no, they are exactly the same. The only difference is Masashi's like a bigger guy and he has like the cut in his eyebrow. Like that's literally the only difference. Their genetics are strong. <laughs> Right? He's more whimsical, <laughs> right, than his brother. It's great. But yeah, I like that Chris and Tetsu both seem wary. They're like, you can't underestimate Naramiya. You're first year. There's a lot of pressure here. And then Kanemaru gives him like the pep talk. But when he walks away, he's like, damn it. He's like, I wish I could have been there to score. I wish I had been taken out. And he's not necessarily jealous of Masashi. He's just mad that he couldn't have done something for the team which is understandable. I feel for Kanemaru. And I like that Mochi and Shirasu, they seem to be like there to encourage him at the dugout when he walks back over. That was really sweet. I liked that. But yeah, May is super excited. Sal Mura, he talks about Masashi having his bazooka spitting pure high octane fire. I really kind of do want to see third year Sal Mura cheering Masashi on. I feel like Masashi is one of those characters like Sal Mura that he's got so much potential and he's going to get better and better. Like seeing Masashi as a third year would be absolutely terrifying, right? I think he's going to be one of those sluggers that's going to like just get better and better because, because we get some good stuff out of Masashi in this chapter, right? And so we have like the idea that May acknowledges that Masashi has a natural lax, like Zen presence to him. And he's like, oh, you've got a presence to you. Like Masashi's ready to go. Like he is like, in the zone, like ready for this, which I give Masashi a lot of praise because going up against Naramiya with two outs, being the pinch hitter, the pressure would be insane. But I can see why Katioka put him in because Masashi is like, he's so zen and kind of simple that I don't see him feeling under pressure. I, I feel like kind of like a Furuya vibe with Masashi where he just doesn't let pressure get to him. And Furuya does a pretty good job of saving off pressure until he like, you know, overstrains himself for other various reasons. But I feel like Masashi's good at handling stress. 
Like he doesn't get stressed out. He doesn't know to get stressed out. He's a first year. He just wants to swing the bat. So I feel like it made sense to put him in, right? And he had a good attitude about it. But he swings and misses. May's going all out. And then chapter 299, deepening. I love, they're like, is this kid really a first year? Yeah, Masashi's huge. Uh, May, but May, he's so much like Saomura. Because he's thinking like in the actual chapter about how the ball was breaking at the beginning of the chapter and he's thinking about evolving his pitch and Salmura notices he sees the gears turning in May's head I'm telling you May and Salmura if they were able to like spend an afternoon together May would probably hate it because May would be like just like yelling at Salmura and calling him all these dastardly things and Salmura would be like but you're pitching <laughs> like uh, Salmura's too sunshine May would be like but I would just want them to hang out together. Like, I want to see May and Salmura hang out, like, one time. I think that it'd be fascinating. Because they're both so similar, right? But Miyuki probably does notice, too, in that moment. It shows a panel of him looking. But Salmura has, like, the little expressive lines next to his head, like he notices, right? We we don't... We do get to see... The thing that I, that I like about Masashi in this volume is that we actually get to see Masashi thinking in the batter's box. We see him, like, positioning himself thinking about the pitches, feeling things out. That gives me a lot of hope for Masashi because that shows he has a lot of promise as a batter. He's going to keep evolving too. Like that evolution is deepening both for May as well as Masashi as well, right? And then May and Itsuki, they disagree, but only once. Only once this time they disagree, right? And the, he pitches from above. Masashi swings. He gets cornered, but... It's crazy, right? You can see the gears turning. And then and then Salmer is like, that coveted curveball. Like, you can tell he just wants to learn it so badly. Like, it's it's funny. But then Itsuki and May, they're on the same page about getting Masashi out. Masashi's thinking from the batter box. May still has that feeling from earlier. And Amahisa, he just, he's so jealous. He's like, you finally found the combo that works for you. He's like, the bullpen's one thing, but actual experience is something completely different. And he just gets kind of mad. He's like, it sucks that you're so good. <laughs> right? He's like, you continue to evolve. And Salmura, Salmura was right. They were predicting that what would what would strike him out. And Mayuki, Mayuki said a changeup. He's like, well, if he wants to get him out, he'll do a changeup. But Salmura's like, no, he's going to use that fastball from earlier. He uses the fastball. So Salmura was correct. And he strikes out Masashi. But I want to make note. Masashi's helmet does not turn. It stays on. I was like, oh, no. Maybe it is a sign of Masashi's evolution that his helmet did not swing. It's a sign. He's growing up. <laughs> but, yeah, Itsuki's like, that was your best pitch today. And then May, he howls in victory just like Salamura did. And that double spray of May, that double spread of May, like, regardless of whether you like May's character or not, he earned that double spread, like the standing ovation, pitching nine innings. Mm-hmm. And even Miyuki and Salmura are both smiling. Like, they, they both respect him. Like, Kurumochi's not happy. Kurumochi's like, ugh. But Salmura and Miyuki, they both, like, have that look of respect. Like, yeah, you did it. All right, King. Sure thing. And I like that that look between Salmura and, and May being like, we're not letting it go yet. Which leads us to chapter 300 and 301. A.K.A. We're not going to get nice things for the rest of this volume. Yeah. So May, I like that May has the blister on his hand. The one thing is that May is so cocky and confident in these last two chapters. It's almost frustrating, right? Like, I don't dislike May's character for it, but it's almost frustrating. Like, as a reader, we're like, no, why? And so he gets that blister on his hand. He's like, I pitched one too many of my new cutters. Not that it matters. And I'm like, oh, you're such a diva. Ah. So he's playing it cool. Um, Higasa takes over third base. It's just barely glossed over, but I'm like... That seems like something to note, like why we're doing that in the ninth inning. And then Salmura, he like, um, what does he do here? Salmura, he gets, he gets, um, he gets cheers. Yeah, he gets cheers. But Wakana and his mom look a little bit concerned because yeah, last year in Salmura's last inning pitching, it was terrifying. And you can tell Wakana and his mom are kind of like having some, some traumatic uh, flashbacks, right? They're thinking of last year probably. And then Katioka, I love that they, they announced it as Katioka the Indomitable versus Kunitomo the Famous. It's like, oh my God. And there's a montage of players from both teams. And they're like, will Sato go to nationals for the first time in seven years? Or will Sato, or will Inoshiro go to nationals for the third year in a row? And it's like, 
the underdogs versus the indisputed champions, right? I I want to say that Sato wins. I want to. I'm like, come on, Terajima, you've led us this far. You've led us this far. You're not going to let him win? Like, come on. But it's just like at this point, I'm like, how? Unless they can do like a double play, unless they can get Tadano out at, unless they can get May out at third, unless they can get May out at third and then Tadano and then the other one's out. I'm like, I just, I just how? Unless they can get him out. I don't know. I don't know. Unless maybe somebody, maybe the next batter will pop a pop fly and then they'll throw it and get Tadano out at second and then they'll throw it home and get May out at home plate. Maybe that's how they do it. Maybe that's how they do it. That's the only way I can see it happening is like they get a pop fly, Tadano's going to second, they throw it and they throw it home to get May out. Maybe that's the way that they do this. I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> Why, Terajima? Why do you make us suffer? Right? Because, yeah, there's a beautiful spread of Sal Mura over May, the South Paul's playing. Like, that spread was gorgeous. And the fact they call Chapter 300 South Paul after May finishes pitching and Sal Mura goes up for hopefully his last inning, too. <laughs> I was like, no. I was like, no, I don't want them to go into overtime. I don't want them to go into extra innings. Nope. But but Narmi and May, that should have been the foreshadowing when Miyuki is like, Miyuki's like, Narmi bats on his instincts. He's hard to read and a pain to read because he doesn't just target a specific kind of pitch. He just follows his instincts. It's just how May works. And maybe that's something Salomar should do more of, right? And Miyuki says he's hard to read. They need to get May and Tadano out to seize control of the game, which is not what happens in the rest of this volume. So thank you, Miyuki, for jinxing it. Uh, but yeah, they need to pull out all the stops. And I like that Koshu's quietly watching from the wings. Like Koshu being like in the wings there watching, it's rather interesting, right? And so then I like that the third years, they all knowing the struggle that they're facing. And Chris, Chris looks so nervous. Chris is just like, come on, guys. He's like, he's like, just, you know, they're concerned. Chris is like, just don't rush. Stick to what Sato's known for. Be true. Like that look by Chris is so heartbreaking. And then May, he's like Salamura. Because when Salamura throws the cutter, May's like, oh, that's the cutter. Like, that's exactly like Salamura. These two are so similar, it's scary, right? Salamura's just a year younger, a year less experience, right? Mm-hmm. And Miyuki, he, they decide that they're going to follow with the number nine and then the change up. And that should have been a sign. The, the moment they start planning ahead is never good for any pitcher in this series. It should be a warning sign. And Salamura's determined. Everyone's cheering. And then May thinks to last year. And he's like, for some reason, I don't feel like we can lose. And that's when Salmar tosses it too high and May hits it. Like my stomach, like my heart sank to the bottom of my stomach when he hit that pitch. And then chapter 301. Chapter 301 is the power of love. Okay. Terajima, now that, now that Ace of the Diamond has become a full-on BL manga, <laughs> right? That The power of love is exactly like a follow-up to The Shape of Duos, which is how we ended the last volume, right? So maybe by the end of the next volume or the end of the game, and it'll be like our hearts make out or something, <laughs> or that'll be the name title or something. I'll be like, come on, Terajima, because he couldn't make it more obvious, right? The Power of Love. It's a sequel to The Shape of Duos. May, God, the moment I thought, I forget because again, Baseball is only known through Ace of the Diamond. And we don't get a lot of home runs in Ace of the Diamond. We really don't. We don't get a lot of home runs. And when we do, it's like way out there, right? We don't get a lot of home runs in Ace of the Diamond. I thought that once it hits the back wall, that that means it's a home run. That's how I always have thought of it. So when it hit the back wall, I'm like, oh, shit, we're screwed. But no, it just barely makes it. And I'm I'm with I'm with May when he was like, you're shitting me. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. And the scary thing is in Ashiro, they're like cheering. Like the fans are going crazy. And May, he's so pissed. He's like, damn it. He's like, I'm so close. You might as well just gave it to me. And Kermo, she's like over there going, what the hell? But yeah, Salvar, he's just like, <sighs> like, just like, oh God, like I'm about to throw up. Right. And I like that Miyuki called a timeout. Miyuki's like, let me make sure everything's okay. But the thing about it is Salvar was fine. He was like, he's like, I know I threw it too high. It's like, I know I did it. And Miyuki's like, it's fine. We got to just keep on going, right? And everybody is like getting crazy loud. And then African Symphony starts playing. And at first I was like, why is Tadano's walkout African Symphony? That doesn't sound like Tadano at all. It's Harada, 
right? Because he's like a massive elephant of a man. I was like, what the hell? Okay. I was like, cheap move. Cheap move. Tetsu and Miyuki already did that in the last game. <laughs> like, don't be, don't be stealing Sato's moves now. No. Cheap. <laughs> I mean, he said would not be thrilled. But yeah, they're trying to do the Tetsu Miyuki thing with Tadano and Harada. But the thing that's kind of weird about that is like, it means more with Tetsu Miyuki because there was that connection between Tetsu Miyuki in the manga. I don't feel like Harada and Tadano have a connection at all. It's literally just Tadano took over from Harada. That's about it. I don't really see them having a connection. And then, but here, look, the power of love, indeed, this chapter. Terajima, you just need, you need to make this work because look, he had, he had May come out and say it. This is where your love for me will be put to the test. I'm like, so my shipper heart that is now multi-ship converted. I still ship May and Harada, but I'm like fully on board the Itsuki May ship now. I was like, you're just, you're, you're kidding me, right? Okay. Well, the, the, he's going to get hit because it's the damn power of love. The power of love needs to strike between Miyuki and Samura. And it kind of does a little bit because he's like, slam it. And everybody's like screaming for him to slam it. He's like, this is where you'll prove your love for me, Tadano. And Miyuki, he's like, I love the sound where like, and we can hear over the deafening roar, like, I can't wait to see this animated, where he's like, let's shut them all up. Which they don't. <laughs> but it was a great sentiment, right? Yeah. And so they note that Yabe and Jinguji are up next to back. So my hope is that Yabe, Yabe's not seemed like a great batter of Inishiro. He's like on the weaker side. I say that and he'll probably get like a freaking home run next one. But... I feel like he's one of the weaker batters on their lineup. So maybe if he pops a fly, gets Tadano out, throws it home to get May. That, that's, that'd be like my dream sequence. I need that to happen. But we're not there yet. And I have to wait a damn month. So, but yeah. They're like, Zono. Zono's ready to help Salamura. He's like, I got this. And Salamura to May. I like when Salamura looks over the May. May is like, mm, like he sticks his tongue out at him. Just like what he did with Furia. It's really cool. And then Salmura, he's like, no matter how many tricks are thrown at me, I'll pitch like I always do. Which again, the power of love. Salmura's like, all Miyuki's asked for me to do is to pitch to his glove. So that's what I'm going to do. I do like that, that May, May is so demanding of Tadano's love. He's like, you will love me and prove your love to me. Whereas, which is a, a bit why I kind of ship Harada and May, because Harada wouldn't put up with that shit. He'd be like, no, just do the damn thing. And May would be like, okay, you know, um, but in the case of like Salamura and Miyuki, Salamura is just like, I just want to, Salamura and Tadano have more in common in those pairings because both Tadano and Salamura want to prove themselves to their partners and May and Miyuki are like the ones to be proven to. So you have that comparison. But yeah, Amahisa, Amahisa gets some praise in. This volume, he does praise Salmer's fielding ability, which I feel is foreshadowing for him getting May out. I want Salamura to get May out. I want Salamura to throw that ball to Miyuki and get him out. I want it. I want it so badly. I can taste it. But we're not there yet. And then Tadano, he's like, he's, Tadano is ride or die for May. He's ready to risk it all. <laughs> he's ready to go all in for May. He's like, I will sacrifice myself. I just want to be the one to let him score. And then he jams it to Tojo and it hits the ground. And then I, I'm i like, May's running the third. Tadano's running the second. There are no outs in the final inning. The score is still two to one. And I swear I saw bags under Salmura's eyes. And I'm like, Terajima, I can't freaking handle this. No. How freaking dare you? How dare you, sir? Hate it. Hate it. Hate it. But yeah, so you know what? I'm just going to wait a month. Just wait a month. It's fine. No big deal. But you know what we're going to do in the meantime? Mm -hmm. To help tide us over until that moment happens, we're going to do a character tier. We're going to do a character tier of our boys. And I have, <laughs> I found a character, it was actually hard to find a character tier online that had as many Ace of the Diamond characters as possible. Some of them looked really weird. Some had like pictures from the anime and pictures from the manga. And I was like, eh, I don't know about that. And then some um, had just actual pictures from the anime. I'm just going with the ones that are from the anime. And I think all the main characters have been established from the anime. So this is a pretty big list. I could not find one with every single Ace of the Diamond character. So 
When Ace of the Diamond is over, if y'all want to make one and send it to me from that tiermaker.com or whatever, if you want to get on a tier maker, make me a tier of every Ace of the Diamond character and just send it to me for the end of the series when we get to it. I'll do that one, but, but this is the best one I could find. So, unfortunately, you all will hate me for this. I don't remember every character from Ace of the Diamond. I felt really bad looking at this. I was like, oh, God, some of these characters, I don't remember their names. And, you know, the, the ones that showed up for one time during one game, I'm like, who are you? So, so yeah, we're just going to, we're just going to, um, you know... We're just gonna go through this. So I have out here to the side like a little a little character listing that will maybe help me if I get lost. And then we have our characters here. So um, let me go ahead and time this out. We're gonna start the character tier here uh, in three, two, one, and here we go. So there are actually like a ton of letters on this and I'm not too crazy fond of them. I'm like, let's just delete a few of these rows. Yeah. So we have the SS tier. Now, the SS tier is going to be my favorite characters. I know several people have asked me who my favorite characters in Ace of the Diamond is. Here's what I'm going to do. My S tier characters are going to be the ones that are like in the running for the top five, in the running for the top five. Then the A characters are like awesome. A characters, they're awesome. They're not like, I'm going to have my top 10 are going to be S and SS. Top 10 are going to be these up here, right? And so I'm probably going to start out with the A's. Every character that I think could be an S or an SS tier, I'm going to put an A first and then sort them out up here. And then B's are, B's the one that have potential. B's are the ones that have a lot of potential. B could be better. <laughs> they got a lot of potential, but they're not quite, I don't love them. But they're like, they could be there with more content to them. Um, C's, I feel like C's I'm indifferent towards. I'm like, eh. I'm like, C's, who are you? What, what's going on? I don't really feel any feel anything towards you as a character. Who are you? <laughs> like, that's how I feel. D's I don't like. D's I don't like. I don't like my D characters. And then E's, I'm going to get rid of E because honestly, Ace of Diamonds is really good about having just awesome characters all around. So yeah, C's, I probably have a lot in C. I'm <laughs> in different characters. And then D I don't like. And then go from there, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I could have had an E ranking, but we're not going to do that. So we got a lot of characters here. Let's just go through and see which ones we can get right off the bat. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just put, oh, Daddy Rizo up in A. We'll sort him out later. We'll sort him out later. We're going we're gonna to put them up there and just go from there. Um, obviously, obviously, where are we going to? Obviously, I'm going to put Furry up in A. going to put Furry up in A. Y'all may be surprised by that, but we'll talk about him. Um, I'm gonna put Koshu up in A too. And of course Raichi. I'm gonna sort out the A characters later, right? I'm gonna put Carlos up in A. And get these guys out of the way. Um any ones I got here. Um you know what? I'm actually Akamatsu, we call him a demon, and we say like we joke that he's a demon. I'm gonna put him in B. Akamatsu, I don't hate his character. I think he's a demon and like smarmy, but we just don't have enough of him for me to either despise him or really like him. He's kind of in this weird, like there's potential there, but I just don't feel enough out of Akamatsu yet. So I'm gonna put him in B. I'm like, you're there. You're gonna be there. I'm gonna put Fukuda up in A. Look at that bean, that wholesome bean. Look at him, right? Oh, Asada's definitely an A. <laughs> We're gonna sort these out. Asada's definitely an A. Uh, Miyuki, that's Miyuki, right? But the visor, that's an odd picture of Miyuki. We'll put him up in A. Uh, Ray, girl, right? I'm gonna have a lot to sort through for the top 10. I'm a Hisa. We're gonna, I'm just gonna get these guys out of the way, right? Um, glasses guy that's with Hongo's team. He goes in B. I want more potential out of him. He's a cool catcher. I love his design. He's like another bespectac uh, bespectacled catcher and I want more of him. So I wish we will get more of him as the game goes on. That would be really nice, right? I feel like we could do a lot with his character. Um, uh, oh, Chris is going up in A. What are we talking about? Yeah. What are you talking about, Willis? Katioka, gonna put him up in A. Do it right here. Kunitomo. That's in a way. <laughs> Look at the coaches. Oh, Sanko's coach. He's going up in A. I like him. I like him. Uh, Chris's dad. Animal. I'm indifferent. <laughs> I am. I, Chris's dad's fine. He's okay. I feel indifferent about him. He's like in the very first part with Chris and then we never see him again. It's, we just hearsay for him. It's fine. He's okay. Oh, Shunshin's going in A for sure. 
Um, Sato, I, I had high hopes for Sato at the start, but he's a B. I, we just don't see enough. He kind of dropped off. It's sort of like the Haruichi situation where in season one you had Haruichi and Furi and Saomura just show up on the field and then from there they just kind of, Haruichi just kind of broke away. Which, that does not make Haruichi go down a rank though because I feel like even though Haruichi broke away from Furi and Saomura, he did his own thing and became known for his own reasons. Whereas Seto, Seto's just kind of like, he's fallen to the wayside and we just don't have much to do with him right now. He's separated from Koshu, so he can't really be there to help Koshu. So he's just kind of like off here by himself. I, I kind of feel bad for him because he has a cool design, but we just don't have a lot of him. Um, Haruichi, I'm going to put up in A for now. Uh, Itsuki's up in A. Two. Um, <laughs> Tomba! 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 Tomba's a B. <laughs> I don't feel indifferent about Tomba. I don't. But if I'm being truly honest, I did not like Tomba in season one. And I know that might be a controversial opinion, but I was just not a Tomba fan. I was kind of like, eh. I just didn't really. I was like, he's the ace, I guess. But, but I will say I like Tomba more now post him. I feel like, I feel like Tomba kind of suffered a little bit of the Furia syndrome where I don't think Tomba, I think Tomba wanted to handle the pressure of the ace and he just couldn't quite get there, right? But he couldn't back down from being the ace because what else could we do? So I I don't know. I feel like Tomba got into a better place after he graduated. And when he came back to give Salomer advice right before the games, I like Tomba more now that he doesn't have that pressure being the ace anymore on him. Plus him and Naka have great moments. So I'm like, yeah, I like him a lot. I like him a lot for that. So I'll keep him there. It's fine. It's fine. Akuni Tomo is going up here in A. <laughs> and then in the A category too. What a scary, what a scary captain, right? Um, let me see who else we got on here. Oh, who we got? Who we got? Who we got? They can go. Um Oh, the one guy with the googly eyes from Ugamori. He's gonna go into he's gonna go into C. He's he's a fun character, but he's just like I think I like his design more than I do his character. He's just kind of like he has a cool design, but that's about it, right? I'm just like eh. And um, let me see on here, Manaka. Man, I'm going to come back to Manaka. I got to think about Manaka. That's I, do I feel bad if I put Manaka over Tomba? <laughs> no, you know what? No, I'm putting him in A. Put him in A. You know why? Because he went down the dugout. He, he went out of the locker room after after Senko's game. Was there with Amahisa. No, nah, I'm gonna put Manaka in A. I like Manaka a lot. I he's kind of he's kind of stuck with me. He's probably one of the he's probably the third year other than Harada. He is the opponent third year from last year's from season one that really stuck with me. I was like, yeah, Manaka and Harada stuck with me a lot. So I was like, you know what? Good for you. I'll put him in A category. He's not going to be in the top 10, spoiler warning, but he'll still be in A. I like him for that. Um, let me see. Who else we got on here? Um, Higasa! Higasa is a B. I like Higasa fine. He looks a lot like Tomba. <laughs> kind of has the same sort of mannerisms, maybe. No, not really. He's a lot more animated than Tomba, but I just don't get, like, I don't know. I wish we had more with him. He's third playing third base now, so maybe we'll get more of that. Who knows? Uh, let me see. Masashi, I'm going to wait. <laughs> Some of these I'm like, no, I want to wait on. Um, let me see here. I probably should have kept that E category. Would have been nice to split those now. Um, Mima. Mima's a B. I, I want more with Mima. I really do. I, I want Sato to win and go to Nationals so that Miyuki can face Mima again. I want to see him again. I want more of him. He has like, he kind of reminds me of Albert from Free. If you've ever watched the series Free, where the first time you meet Albert, he's a blonde. He's from Sweden. He's got a lot of like, he's definitely intimidating, but you don't get a lot of him and you just want to find out more. That's how I feel about Mima. I want to find out more about him for sure. Um, who else we got on here? You know, I'm avoiding people on purpose, right? Um, oh my gosh, Mukai. Mukai with that damn tongue. I'm going to move him up to B because honestly, the beginning of the anime, I didn't really care for Mukai, if I'm being honest. I didn't care for him, but uh, like Tomba, he's grown on me. He's grown on me a lot. And so I like his antagonism towards May. It's fun. Uh, speaking of May, he's going up in A. Um, I like it a lot. Uh, Sonata's going up in A. This is going to be hard to differentiate the top 10, right? Harada's going up in A. Oh my God. The A category is getting ridiculous. We'll have to balance this out at some point. <laughs> at some point, we're going to have to balance this out. Uh, Kuki. 
Kuki is going in B with Sato. I want more from him. We're just not quite there yet, but I, I know we can get there. Uh, Nori, Nori's going up in A. Yes, yes, yes. Um, the one coach from Akira's team, he's going in C. He was sweet. I liked him, but there's no potential left there for his character. So I feel like he's just kind of like stuck in that position. No problems there. Um, Inui. Inui's going up in A. I like Inui's character a lot. Um, let me see. Where's Wakana? Wakana, girl. Let me find Wakana. Like, Wakana, girl. I'm, oh God, I'm going to put her in B. I know a lot of people will be like, you put Wakana in B? But, I mean, like, we just don't get a lot with her. She's just kind of like, she's either there. I liked her earlier on in the season where it was the joke that Sal Murrow was, like, ignoring her text messages and she'd keep texting him. But honestly... Now that now that Terajima switched this over to completely to a BL series, what do we do? <laughs> so I just want Wakana and Kuromochi to meet so that he can ask her out. And then my my pa crack pairing will become a thing, right? Speaking of Kuromochi, he's going in A. It's from there. Um, hmm, who else we got on here? Zono! Zono! Oh my god, Zono. Y'all hate me, but Zono's a B. <laughs> He's not my top 20. Let's just say we're going to have the top five here in SS, the, the next five in S, and then like the, the other whatever we're left with is going to be an A here. But Zono, I like Zono a lot. Don't get me wrong. But I just don't love Zono. And I'm glad when Zono does well, but then I get like frustrated with him. So that's that's there. There's my controversial opinion. Um, oh, smiley guy. He's going in C. Mm -mm. <laughs> he's probably one of my least favorite rival pitchers. I just never was on board with his character. I was like, no, he's creepy. No, thank you. Where's Zizen at, though? Where is old Zizen at? Where is he at? Is he on here? If they didn't leave us with Zizen, I'm going to be a little bit upset because he deserves to be on this. Maybe I'm just missing him for now. We'll see. Oh, Yuki Tetsu. Tetsu, my love, you're going up here in A for sure. Definitely Tetsu's up there. Um, let me see who else we got here. Masashi boy. Masashi's going to go in B. If I put Zono in B, Masashi's going to join him in B. Just because Masashi, I loved him in this volume. Honestly, Masashi went from like a C rank to a B rank in this volume for me because of that potential. I've, I've never really gotten on board with Masashi. I'm kind of like the, the, the hat turning thing. It's funny, but I'm just like, is that all? And this, this volume actually showed us that Masashi's thinking. He has presence. He has like the zen. He can actually do it. He just needs more time and experience. Like like Masashi elevated himself a little bit for me in this volume to rise him up to B rank. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, Y'all will probably let me get on here and find how to pronounce his name because I know I know y'all are gonna be like really, but oh let me find him on here. Do 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 do. Um, Monoma. Is that how I say his name? I've probably said it wrong. But let me look him up on here. Oh my god. Like the worst. But yeah, no, no weasel boy. He's my first not like. <laughs> Put him down at the bottom! But just like, I, I've never liked his character and I've never been happier that we don't have to deal with him in this series for this final game. Because I don't know. I just like, we've built all these characters up and Sato to have this great work ethic. And even, even if they're like Nabe and they question everything, they still worked really hard and tried to find a place to make themselves have purpose. This little weasel shit was just trying to get out of all the work. And Haruichi's like, you shouldn't do that and called him out on it. So no, I don't like him. <laughs> I never really found him that funny and I just can't. Mm -mm. Don't like him. <laughs> oh God, it's great. Oh my God. Uh, I'm trying to say there was another coach that I really didn't like either. I need to find him. Where is the other coach I don't like? Oh my god. I don't really care for Maki's coach. No. Maki's coach, the idea that he just like tries to control the boys. No, I'm not a fan of that. I, I don't really like Maki's coach at all. I've never really cared for him, so he's out. Uh, Rio. Rio is an A. Yeah, Rio is an A. If Haruichi's up there in A, Rio is too. Rio, I like Rio. Kind of like Tomba, I like him more post him retiring and graduating. He's just got saltier, like saltier, but also more self-aware and more kind of like introspective, which I like with Rio. I, I like with Rio a lot. Wasn't happy about that injury back in the first season, but he's come a long way from there. So we'll, 
We'll forgive him. Um, the coach that was Katioga's mentor, I'm going to put him in B. I like him. He's not one of my top coaches. I feel like my top coaches are up here. But he's he's got potential. I liked him as a rival coach. He gave Miyuki a challenge and the other teams a challenge. I liked that a lot. That was a lot of fun. Um, the coach for his team, no, not feeling it. <laughs> not feeling it at all. Um, let me see who else on here. Oh my gosh, where is is it go? Where is his name? I'm looking I gotta look it up here. Um looking through my character sheets here for their actual names. Do, 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 do. Where's Hongo? Where is that Hongo boy? Where he be? Hongo. Let me see, find Hongo on here. Oh my God. Oh no, that's Maki's coach. Well, he goes down in D2. <laughs> Wrong coach. No, he goes down in D2. I don't like him either. I don't like his ears and I don't like him. <laughs> nope, bye. Oh, Samura goes up here in A. Why was he so down at the bottom of that? No. Oh, hot guy coach. Hot guy coach is instantly a B on looks alone. <laughs> I thought he was Oikawa. Thought he was on the team playing. He, by purpose of hotness, gets elevated to B status. There, do not at me. I don't care. <laughs> so, uh, Kanemaru. Kanemaru. Hmm. <laughs> I put Zono in B. That makes me feel sad because Kanemaru... I'm going to come back to Kanemaru. i got to think on that just a wee bit more. Nabe! Nabe and Umamiya, they both go into A rank together because they have to go together, right? They don't have a choice, so we're going to put them up here. They they have to go together because that's just the way it is. They're an OTP. They have to stick together. And Nabe and Umamiya have, like, one of the better, one of the better, like, battery relationships I like in this series that's from a rival team. I like their battery a lot. Like, like Sonata's a really great pitcher, but he doesn't really have that connection with his battery. Like, like, like Naramiya, I mean, Uga, Uma Mia and Now are like OTP. They're like in sync. Like if, if Now was a catcher, the game would be over. Like, like Sato, none of them would win. <laughs> if, if Now was allowed to play and be catcher, none of them would win. I think Now was even a pitcher, which makes it, you know, what it is. But if he'd been a catcher working with Uma Mia, like, like OT, too powerful, too OP. The game would have been over. But yeah, the twins are C's. I don't care for them. They're just kind of plain. I, here's my thing about them. Here's my thing about them. I guess I could put them in B. I'm not indifferent, but I kind of am. I feel like it's such wasted potential. I feel like twins in anime either go either one way or the other, especially in sports anime. You either have like the Mia brothers in high Q where you get like a solid backstory and you get a ton of stuff about them. Or it's like Johto and a Jota in their br in Run With The Wind where they're identical and they barely have an identity and you don't know much about them. I feel like it's one way or the other. Twins are especially identical ones, which they look fraternal. They either go one way, one way or the other. And I feel like these two twins kind of skirted the line towards the Run With The Wind angle where we just don't get enough of them. There's so much potential with twins, like so much cool drama, so much stuff you could do story-wise with them. And I think Terajima is just like, I don't have time. Eh. And kind of shoves it aside, which is a shame, right? It's a damn shame. Um, also, also is a B. <laughs> if I'm gonna put Zono, if I'm gonna put, put, put him next to Zono, if also is allowed, if Zono's in B, also is too. Also's fine. I just feel like he gets a little dramatic where he's just like he has to be the hero or whatever. Or his girlfriend dumping him. Like, he's like, well, I could have just screwed it up. So I'm glad that it didn't come to that. And we're like, like, I don't know. Also, I do appreciate his save in the last volume. And at the cost of a concussion, possibly. I do appreciate that. And that elevates his character a little bit. But he's not quite up here with the ones I love. So him, him and Zono are just going to stay here. And where's Tojo at? Where would be Tojo? I do like Tojo, though. <laughs> so I'm going to put him at A. Tojo, I like him a lot. Where's Shirasu? Where's our white laser? He for sure is going. He for sure is going up in A rank. For sure. Kanemaru. Okay, here's the deal. I'm going to put Kanemaru in A rank, and I will tell you all why. Kanemaru and Tojo, kind of like now and Umamiya, go together. But Kanemaru has come a long way in not only supporting Salmura, but being there for him, like trying to rein stuff in between him and Furuya, being a support person. He's in the same year as Salmer and Furuya. So there's been conflict and stuff like with that that he's dealt with. So I do like Kanemaru for that. He skirts the line. He's not my favorite. He's definitely going to not be my top 10. But 
I will give him that. That I think Zono and also and Masashi, as much as I like them, I do have to put them. They're like they're skirting the edge as well, right? Okay. Um, Yui, are you a boy? I'm gonna put him up an A. Him and us, him and Asada and Koshu, they're my top three of the first years. I like them a lot. Um, June, June, our boy June. I, oh man, and Haruno and all them. Why are we doing these things? Uh, I'm going to put the one manager girl in B. going to put her right there for sure. She's fine. Um, oh, our girl with Tetsu and the girl that likes Nori. Uh, I don't want to have so many in A. <laughs> I don't want to have too many in A, right? Okay. I'm sorry, but Maki's going in C. <laughs> Just Maki. I'll be honest. If there's one character I'm really disappointed in, it's freaking Maki. There were, I don't know, I had such high hopes for what they would do with Maki. I was like, he's like this big, tall, imposing pitcher. He's got this hype to him. He's like the standout. He's got this grudge against Sato. And they face him like one time, and then we barely see him after that. And the next time we see him, it's just like they get mopped. So I was like, ah, he's the one character I'm like, you had such potential there. And really? Really? Okay. Just kind of a letdown. Kind of a letdown. Mm -hmm. Now, I do think that um, our boy here that's with Yakushi coming up here, he's got potential. I like him having a lot of potential there. That's good. I like him. Um, oh, Azuma. Azuma. Azuma's a B. You know why he's a B? Because he gives them snacks and drinks. <laughs> he, get, he comes back from beyond the... I like that even though he's trying to be a pro player... He comes back to give the team snacks and stuff to help them through their practices. That's good on you, Azuma. He was like such a such an imposing figure from the start. And he's one that as the series goes on, we still remember him. So I do like that a lot. Um, the one guy, Akira with their team. Yeah, he's a B. I liked him a lot. I liked his storyline a lot. I really thought we'd see more of him. Then when you find out they're third years, it's like, well, that sucks. We're not going to see them again. But I do, I did like his character an awful lot. He was probably my favorite of that character, uh, that team for that match. Hmm. Let me see here. That's not Tetsu, is it? <laughs> I just realized that's not Tetsu, is it? This is Tetsu down here, isn't it? Am I right? Am I right? That's not Tetsu. Oh my God, what is happening? That's Tetsu. This guy is not. You poser, you go down to B! <laughs> That's, this is Tetsu up here. Oh, the eyebrows. The helmet. Why the helmet's on? So, yeah, no, he goes down to B. <laughs> Whoops. Um, June. I'm going to put June in A because I liked June's talk with Salmura. June rides the line for me, too. He could be close to being B just because, but I don't know. I have to put him and Tetsu together. And June had, like, a really awesome arc with the whole thing. The OVA about him, like, overcoming, not making it to nationals. And his whole thing, connection with Zono, the part-time job, him giving, like, summer encouragement. And it's June. He's our little spitz. I did always like him in the in season one, so I'll give him that. Um, this guy for Inoshiro, don't know him. <laughs> Gonna put him down here. Nope. Um, a lot of these older former third years, you'll notice that I'm skipping some people intentionally because I'm waiting to see where this goes. Um, do I even know you? No. <laughs> from Yukushi. Um, he goes and see. Nah. Um, is, that's not Hongo. Where the hell is Hongo in all of this? I know, there he is! There he be! There's Hongo! Okay. Oh, that's, yeah, there's Hongo. Look at him. Hongo goes up in A. I like Hongo a lot. He's such a, he's such a menace, but I like him a lot. He's going up there. Nabe's going up in A too, as y'all knew. Y'all knew it was coming. Um, where is Ogawa at? Is that Ogawa? Where, where he be? Or is that Ogawa? I think that's Ogawa, right? Um, yeah, no, he's going to D. <laughs> For tackling Miyuki! No, I, here's the thing about Ogawa. Yeah, I, here's the thing about him. I, I thought he was kind of amusing at first. He was kind of like amusing because he had the humming and singing thing, which was kind of cutesy. And I thought that was a lot of fun. But then after he tackled Miyuki, it all just kind of went downhill for his character. And I would have been forgiving because, you know, he was a first year. It was a bad call. But, you know, maybe he learned his lesson. But then when we see him again, he's like slacked off even more. And I was like, no. That's like, hell no. I'm not into slacker characters. So you slackers, you stay over there in the corner. No. Um, let me see. Indifferent about him. Nah. Um, Haruno, girl. 
Uh, she is Salamara's, like, biggest supporter of all the girls. She goes in A rank. I like her a lot. Um, I feel bad because I feel like the other girl managers, um, Tetsu's, like, future wife, um, I'm gonna put her in B. She's great, but I just, I don't know. I feel like Haruno, we, we got the most, like, arc out of all the girl managers, but she had the diary, so, uh, but I put Zono in B. I'm regretting things. Um, and I put Wakana in B. Yeah, they're both gonna stay right there. I don't know. Haruno gets a little bit of an edge, but then Wakana... Oh, damn it, I'm gonna move Wakana up. <laughs> I'm gonna move Wakana up to A rank. I'm having too many characters in A rank. Honestly, too many. Um, but then I want to move her up. Nope, nope, she's gonna stay with Zono. Keep them company. No, I'm gonna keep her there. And along with the other girl manager here, even though she's really supportive of Salamura, and she's, of course, got the diary, and she's Tetsu's future wife and everything, but I, we just didn't see enough of them. At least Haruno and Wakana, they are pretty mainstay in the series as the lady characters that are that are the, like, fake-out love interest for Salamura. So we got that, but yeah, I know. Don't hate me because I put him in B rank. I could have put him in C rank, but no, I put him in B. They're safe. They just, there could be more of them, right? Same with her, too. They're in B rank. Safe and sound, right? Um, so anyway, other characters um, that we're missing here. Oh, Mayochi. I'm going to put him in B rank. <sighs> just need need more of him. I wish we had more of him in this series. I honestly do. Um, the one guy that is, the, that had like the hots, the Seiko man that had the hots for uh, May. He can go there. <laughs> He can go in B rank, sure. And then, oh, best boy. Yeah, for him, he's gonna go in B rank. He had like the tragic backstory, but he was so sweet. And like, I wanted more of him. He like had an amazing character arc and like one backstory. I wanted to see more of him. So he gets put there. He's put there. Um, I barely remember you, sir. So you're gonna go right there. Um, this one guy for Anishiro, nah. Um, who are you? <laughs> characters I'm like who are they I don't remember them so they're gonna go and see <laughs> they're gonna go and see rank oh my god some of these are like older third years and I'm like who you be oh Mishima Mishima that's a terrible picture of Mishima Mishima um I'm gonna put him in B rank if Zono goes in B rank Mishima has to go there too because they're very similar in my opinion they're very similar characters I like them a lot I just, they're, they're not in my upper echelon for characters, but I do like them a lot. I like Mishima. Where is, where's the other one for Yakushi? Where he be? Where he be? Oh, come on now. We're, I feel like we're missing him. Hmm. Oh, this little guy here. He was, he was, I forget his name, but I liked him a lot. He gets to go there in B rank. He was cute. The reporter, the reporters. I think someone, maybe it was Kiri in the Discord, was talking about the girl reporter having the hots for Sonata, and that was like a turn off. I was like... It's great, but here's the deal. I it's hard to dog the reporters for me because they do offer they do offer really good insights and they they're kind of like a fly on the wall passive observers. So I feel like they're B rank. They're fine. I like them in the games and I like that they kind of give the audience information. No, you're C indifferent. No. A lot of these third years that retired back in season one I don't remember them quite so I'm like Ugh. like I feel bad and I'm sure that you all in the comments are like they're not third years or second years they're still playing on the team <laughs> I'm like well then they should make themselves more known and then I remember them so they're just gonna get C rank because I'm like I don't know uh, I feel bad I feel bad oh no why is oh no like with the helmet on he's so hard to hear oh no is a rank I like oh no a lot Mm -hmm. Y'all thought I'd miss Kariba. Y'all thought I wouldn't recognize him, but there he is with his tears. B rank. <laughs> if I can't remember your name, you're not getting into A rank. But but I, he is supportive. Again, I feel like it's like if Zono's there, then a lot of these other characters are here. Nope, C rank. Um, oh, the hot guy that I thought is like, this is what Salamura could be if he was like, more Bishonen. He'd be good. Um, I'm going to put him in B rank because he looks like Salamura, only hotter. Um, and then, wait, did I mess up Ono for someone else? Did I, did I mess up again? Where, why? No, no, Masako. Is that Masako? Is that Masako before he gained weight? Is it? I need to find Masako. I need to find Masako so I can double check. Was that him? Oh my god. This is bad. Yeah. My Zono got him. Uh, Masako, where he be? Oh my god. I feel really bad because I'm like, okay, where is Masako on this 
character list because I think that's who that is. I think it's before he gained weight. Oh my god. I, I think so. I'm going to put Masako because I did like him a lot. I'm going to put him in A. Um, oh, this guy here. Meh. Um, and then this guy here. Eh. You're noticing I'm getting down to the characters I don't care for. <laughs> so we get down there. Um, eh. Eh. <laughs> I know as I'm going eh, somebody's like, that's my favorite character in the whole series. I'm like, well, then they should make themselves more known. Oh my God. This is bad. Um, so yeah, I feel like all these two guys here, they're so sweet, but I'm like, no, I need more of you. Need more of you, please. Um, and then, yep, him. Need more of him. Um, oh god, that one, the go kid. Yeah, he was eh. I again, I liked him better. I liked him better at the end of the game, but I was like, uh, it's fine. And so then well, he's gonna go in and too. Basically, the C category is if I was just like, eh. Either I don't remember you very well, or I'm like, eh. So then that leaves uh, Ochi Ai and Shirakawa. I, here's the thing. Here's the thing. These two lazy bums, don't like them. These two coaches, not good coaches, don't like them. So that leaves, that leaves like, it, I really don't like these four, but then what do I do about Ochi Ai and Shirakawa? Because... It's like with these four that I truly dislike, there's like no charm to them for me. Like I, there's not like a redeeming charm to them where I'm like, oh yeah, 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 sure. No, there's just not, right? And so I have nothing to do with them. With, with Shirakawa and Ochi, it's almost endearing how frustrating they can be, right? It's almost endearing. Like Shirakawa, I'm like his hatred of Miyuki, I'm like, why? But why? So it's, it's almost like a love to loathe situation where I'm like, but what do I do with you? So I'm, hmm. With these characters, none of them really stand out to me a whole lot. Or they didn't really stand out. These guys stood out. And I didn't hate them like these guys did. So you know what? I feel like the most pitiful thing I can do is put them in B. <laughs> put them in B! Just pissed off everybody watching this video. But yeah, no, Ochi, he, he gets at the bottom of B and Shirakawa is at the bottom of B. They are, they are fascinating and entertaining enough to get put in a B. They're not indifferent or boring or not memorable and they're, I don't despise them. So they go into B. But they're at the bottom of B. The bottom of the B barrel, right? Shirakawa is just so much fun to loathe and seeing him get shit on this volume was kind of fun. And then Ochi, Ochi, I really didn't like in the start of season two. If you had had me do this character tier way back then, he probably would have been in D. But he's 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 mellowed out. He's mellowed out. He's had some moments that have been kind of funny. And so he's definitely not in A rank. No. But I, I can't put him in C rank because that would just make him seem indifferent. I'm not indifferent about him. So they're there to say. So then we got our, our A characters we got to sort out into our top 10. <sighs> you guys, this is like picking your favorite kid. Nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to pick their favorite kid. Who wants to do that? Not me. Okay. Well, first things first. Let's get out of the way my favorite character in the whole damn series, and that's Saomura. <laughs> Honestly, Saomura may be my favorite sports anime main character. Maybe my favorite. I love Saomura. The Taurus empathy is strong. I feel for him. I, his struggle has been so real. You suffer alongside him. The lows are lows and the highs are highs. And I want the world for our sunshine boy. And he's a sunshine boy that's thinking, that's evolving, that's got the spirit of the ace. I could just sing Salmer's praises all day. And so, yeah, he's my favorite character. He's undisputably my favorite. And then from there, it's kind of like, what flavor of the day do I want? Because from there, it gets a little bit trickier. So I would say Salmer is up there as my number one favorite. But I would put Raichi as my number two. I love Raichi. He, well, he would have been the main character. Where is he? We don't know. He's somewhere. We'll find him someday. But I feel for Raichi and I don't know. I feel for him. But yeah, I, Raichi's up there. He's my number two character. Um, and then from there, from there it gets hard because honestly, from there it can kind of, kind of any way. I love Raizo though. So Raizo might be my number three. Keep the father and son duo together. I love the Todorokis. The Todorokis are wonderful. They're, Yakushi's my favorite team, aside from Sato, and they're just awesome. I love them so much, right? 
So from there, I'm like trying to think, okay, well, who would my number, my top five be? I've also got number six through 10. So I got to think about that as well. Um, and that's really, really hard, right? Like who would I put up there to be in there? You know what? Honestly, though, oh man, that's really, really hard. Okay. Let me see who else would be. I'm going to leave these top two spots open. I'm going to start putting characters here. So I'm going to start putting um, Chris and Pai and Amahisa um, up there and Koshu. I like me some Koshu. May, um, Sonata. I'm going to end up with more than 10. Kermochi. <laughs> I'm going to end up with more than 10, aren't I? Crap. Um, mm, 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 mm. Oh, damn, but I really like Shirasu too. This is hard. Maybe I'll have to do like more in the S tier, more in the S tier. Maybe I might have to do that. Okay, let's see who's staying in A tier. Let's se separate it out that way. Um, Obviously, Ono, where'd he go? Where'd Ono go? Ono and uh, and Moscow are staying down there. Wakana and Haruno are staying in A. Nabe staying in A tier. Hongo staying in A tier. We don't know enough about him, but I like him there. June staying in A tier. Tetsu staying in A tier. I love Tetsu to pieces. He's a great character and stuff, but he's not in my top 10. Same with Yui and Kanemaru and Toji. So those Tojo, so those are good there. Um, I love Nori, but he's probably gonna stay in A tier for me, along with my OTP, Umamiya and Now. Gonna keep them in A tier as well. Ryo is gonna stay in A tier. Inui stays in A tier. Manaka stays in A tier. Uh, Kunitomo. Kunitomo is probably my third favorite coach, but he's staying in A tier. Along with Senko's coach. They're going to stay in A tier too. They're, they're awesome characters, top-notch characters. They're going to stay in A tier. Um, Haruichi's going to stay in A tier too. I like Haruichi. He's great. Um, he's just not my top favorites. I don't know. I feel like ever since Haruichi went off on his own, I've still liked Haruichi's storyline a lot. And he's, I mean, if, they, if you're an A tier character, I like you a lot. But he's not in my top ten. I don't know. We'll keep him there. Um, and then Shun, Shun Shun, as much as I like Shun Shun, I'm going to keep him right there. Oh, this is getting harder. Um, Fukuda, he's going to stay in the A tier. I love Fukuda. He's sweet. But then it's like, oh my God. Oh my God. So I'm going to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, 18. All right. So I'm going to put, we're going to do top 15 in S and SS. Okay. So I need to keep three here. Um, Asada is going to stay in A tier. He is a sweet bean, but he needs to stay in A tier. And I don't know. Oh my God. What, how do we do this? Oh my God. So we have, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, um, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. We need to keep two more in the A tier. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move Ray up to S. I'm going to move Miyuki up to S. Um, I need to keep two more after these. Um, I'm going to put Furia up in S. Um, I'm going to put, man, with Carlos and Dodon and Harada and Shirasu. Oh, my God, Shirasu's going to go up to S. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to do it. And I was just waiting on it to whether I wanted to stop or not. Right? So I've got to leave two. Man, oh, I'm going to leave two. Which two? Oh, my God. Um. Okay. Okay. I'm going to move. I'm going to move Katayoka. And I'm going to move Carlos. I'm going to leave Itsuki and Tadano. I'm going to leave Tadano and Harada in A tier. Only because. Harada, because as much as I love Harada and May, as much as I love Harada as a catcher, I I want to see more of him in May. I want to see more of him in his pro career. And he's just kind of like fallen. Like most of the third years, with the exception of Chris and Pai, I've kind of left in in that one tier because we just don't see a lot of them afterwards. Chris has a special place. So I, actually, you know what? Chris is going to go up here. <laughs> yeah, he's in my top five. Chris is uh, surprising no one. Um, but yeah, but unlike Chris, like the other ones, I just, yeah, we just, they, they're an A or B tier. And so that's where Harada kind of falls into that. And then Tadano, I love Tadano and Tadano's really grown on me and the ship of him and May has grown on me. But Tadano, I need him to just get, to make his balls a little bit steelier. <laughs> Just a wee bit. He's almost there. I'm like, because Carlos gives no fucks. <laughs> Carlos gives none. He's just like, I'm here. Deal. And so I kind of want Itsuki to have more of the add to with May. But right now, May, Tadano is like a puppy dog. He is following May just like, like, Tadashi follows Adam and Skate the Infinity. That's where he's at right now. And I like that dynamic a lot. 
But he needs to get his, his balls a little bit tighter for me <laughs> to move up into the S tier. So, okay. So we have these, we have our, our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One more has got to be my top five. So yes, Samara, Raichi, Rizo, and Chris are definitely in my top five. Is Rizo in my top five? God, this is hard. This is hard. Like I would say this top 15 may rotate out on a, on a daily basis. Cause I could rotate out Rizo. Let me think about it. I'm going to take Rizo out for a second. God, this is hard. Yeah, These three are mainstays. Chris, Raichi, Salmura, they are for sure always going to be my top three, right? But then from there, it gets really hard, right? Okay, let me let me sort out who would be... Okay, Carlos is going to stay in S tier. He's definitely my top 15. I love Carlos. I love how sassy he is. He's, like, hot. He's always great. He's a great player. He's super friendly with Miyuki and all of them. Love that. Like, I like Carlos a lot, but he needs to stay right there, right? And then my girl, Ray. I love Ray to pieces, but she's definitely my top 15. Like she is our, she is our main reason that Sato is the way that it is. She's our girl boss. I love her. Same. I'm going to put Katioka down here. He's in my top 15 too. But as the adults, like I, I feel like Ray, she could, it's funny in the discord, we were like, Ray could be the coach of the team. It's like, she could, right? But I feel like she deserves that spot handedly. And Katioka, I love Katioka. And there's moments that I absolutely adore with him. Like, he made me like tear up with the team and everything. He's done some things I've been like, mm, wouldn't have done that, but I like him. He's probably my favorite coach other than Rizo. So they're my top two coaches. So I'm going to leave them there. And then let me see if we narrow it down even further. Um, I'm going to say I like Shirasu a lot, but Shirasu by Katoka. I like Shirasu a lot. And these last few volumes have made me appreciate his character so much more. He's like such a force to be reckoned with. And I love that about him. Um, but he's not in my top five necessarily. He's just right there, right? So we're about to get in the top 10. So who else would I be pushing beside? Um, yeah, this is so hard. Um, I would say, honestly, um, why, why am I doing this? Oh my gosh. Why do y'all make me do this? I don't know. I'm trying to like work my way backwards. I would, I guess Rizo, would he be in the 10th spot? I guess he would be. He's, he's like, he's my favorite coach. He's my favorite coach in Katioka's second. But there's so many like individual players I like more that I'm like, Ugh. I love Rizo though. Like his relationship with Raichi, his relationship with Sonata and his team members. I like them a lot. Koshu is going to be my number nine. I want more of Koshu. I want so much more of Koshu. I love Koshu. He's like such a good communicator, but right now he's been relegated to mediator and I want him to do like an Itsuki move and just be like, but he can't yet because Miyuki's in the way. So uh, Koshu's gonna be my number nine, like Koshu. Um, my number eight player um, is probably gonna be Sonata. I love Sonata. I do. He's one of my favorite pitchers in the whole series. I love him. But I want more of him. I want to see what he's going to do post high school. I want him and Raichi to have more adventures. I want to know where Raichi is. <laughs> but he's going to be my number nine. Okay, or my number eight, rather, right? Number eight. Okay, so number seven. Oh, my God. Well, wait, no. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, he would be number nine. So number 10 is Koshu. Number nine is Sonata. Um, number eight is probably going to be Furuya. I love Furia. I love how supportive Furia is of Salmura. It's the best rivalry. Eight's my lucky number, so Furia gets my lucky number. But um, I love Furia's character. He's just, just not like an expressive character like Salmura and Raichi and Mei and Amahisa. He's just not that bold character. He's very consistent, but sometimes his character gets a little flat. But that's just Furuya. So I love Furuya as a character. I love the rivalry him and Salmura have developed. I love the friendship they have. The fact that he calls him Ajun is adorable. I love it. But it's just other than that, I think people give Furuya a lot more grief than he deserves. But aside from that, I'm like, I've got to put him, I've got to put him right there in number eight. Uh, number seven. This is where it gets really, really hard because these four characters I like a lot. Um, but I'm going to put May as number seven. I'm going to put May as number seven. I like May a lot. I do. I like May a lot. Um, he's a diva. He's he's my favorite type of diva character where he knows that he's a diva and he's very self-aware, but he just doesn't care and goes at it anyway. I like all the comparisons we've got from him and Salamura. It's great. But yeah, I, 
I like I like May a lot as a character, but then there are parts of me that's like I want to see him interact with other characters and see where that goes. So I like May a lot quite a bit, but he's gonna stay at number seven for me. Um, mm, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put Kermochi as my number four. <laughs> Side there. I love Kurmochi. I freaking love Chitasama. He's grown on me so much in this series. I've been debating it the last five minutes whether I put Kurmochi as my number four. Yes, because not only Taurus Brothers Unite stay true, but I just love Kurmochi and his arc. Like the delinquent OVA, the fact we followed him like Sal Murray, and we've seen Kurmochi grow, like be a vice captain, to be someone that like went from being like kind of not concerned about anybody as a second year to being like third year, like dad, big bro figure, like watching over the team. I love Kermochi. I love the energy he has. I love his moments in all these games. Yeah, Kermochi is my number four. So then it comes down to the final boss, Amehisa or Miyuki. Oh my God, Amehisa or Miyuki. I just, here's the thing. It, it's like Amehisa, we don't get nearly as much of, right? We don't get nearly as much of Amehisa as we do with Miyuki. But Miyuki pisses me off sometimes. If I'm being truly honest, I'm like, Miyuki, you need to just talk. <laughs> just communicate, damn it. And I know Miyuki's so cool. He gets like the Terajima draws him the best. Miyuki has the awesome moments. He's the captain. Ah. And I love Miyuki. I do. He's in my top 10 characters of the series. But is he in my top five? Miyuki, I'm just like, I want you to communicate with Salmar. Just sit down and talk, damn it. Don't run away. So there's a part of me that wants to leave May and Miyuki together to, to be their exes right here. And then there's another part of me that wants to not put Amahisa in my top five. Because I'm like, do we have enough with Amahisa to deserve a top five? Uh, or do I just put like Sonata up there <laughs> and then just and call, and call it even? Or Furia up there. But then it's like, mm, do we stick them all together here? It's very difficult, right? Or do I put Rizo back up there? I could put Rizo back up there. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to take the cheaters way out and just bump Rizo back up to my top five. Yeah, okay. I feel good about that. <laughs> I love Miyuki. I do. I do. I love Miyuki. I love Amahisa a lot. I wish we had more with Amahisa. That's my only thing, keeping Amahisa from being my top five. I wish we had more with him. And then Miyuki, if that boy would open up, he's gotten better. He's gotten better. He's gotten a lot better. And he's just, he's become a really cool character. He's my number seven. So, I mean, I can't say much. But, yeah. I just want more. I want more communication. So, yeah, that's, those are my characters. Huh. <laughs> Take a picture of that. Take a picture of that, sucker. So, yeah, that's where I'm at now. Regretting every decision I've just made over the last however many minutes. Regretting all the decisions. But that's where we stand for now. So, so we'll see. Whenever the series is completely over... I'll go back and we'll redo this. Maybe I'll research remember some of those players that I forgot. Mm -hmm. I can already see the comments now, like how wrong I am, but yellow. <laughs> well, that made me feel a little bit better. A little bit better now that we've got that over with. And yeah, I feel a little bit better. Um, the only problem is that, you know, now I have to wait. <laughs> now I have to wait, wait for four damn weeks. Well, I know you all will be black boxing away in the Discord, which is fine. I'd rather y'all black box me than spoil me. I only ask that those of you in the comments down below, please do not spoil me. I want to be surprised. But next week, we're going to start a new series. We're going to start a new series during this time slot next week. And then whenever Chapter 310 comes out with English sub subtitles or English translations, um, I'm sure by in the Discord will let me know. And whenever Volume 34 is complete, um, I will record my reaction to that and post it on here. So it'll probably be on a Wednesday. I, on Patreon, this airs on Wednesdays and on YouTube, it's Thursdays, but I'll probably do volume 34 and the upcoming volumes Ace of the Diamond on Wednesdays just to keep up with that trend. So that's my goal anyway. So just got to wait a week. So you know what? By Thanksgiving, by around the time of end of November, we'll have, we'll have this and it'll be glorious. We'll have our volume 34 and the conclusion to this matchup. Hmm. <laughs> so in the meantime, I hope you all enjoyed this discussion, this reaction, but it's going to be a long wait, but it'll be worth it to see the conclusion of this final game. Hopefully. 
Unless we go into extra innings and then I'll scream and check my computer. <laughs> so in the meantime, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe. Take care. And yeah, I'll be back very soon, hopefully, with more Ace of the Diamond Act 2.